and pure republic for which it stands, stands, one nation, under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome, everybody. We are going to go directly into executive session, so I would entertain a motion. I'll make that motion. I'll second. And um, voting, Ms. Wagner? I'm yes. sorry, I, I have some question. Um, can we read the motion so that we can clarify the purpose for the executive session? It's on the agenda and everybody has it, but you want it read out loud, you mean? Motion to enter to. into executive session at 7.36 p.m. to discuss employment history of a particular person or persons or matters leading to the appointment, employment, promotion, demotion, discipline, suspension, dismissal or removal of a particular person or persons or corporation and consult with the school attorney was made and consult with the school attorney was made on a motion by Ms. Wagner and seconded by Mr. LaPlut. Ms. Wagner? Yes. So I'm sorry, I just have one additional question um, because I don't see there's an opportunity on the agenda for me to ask this question, but I do have one or more motions to offer in addition to what's on this agenda. Uh, and I'm hoping that there will be an opportunity for that, which of course would be conducted in public. So I would when, we, advise the public. when we come out of executive session, we need a motion to, to adjourn. So when we come out of executive session, that would be the time to put forth a motion if you had a motion. Okay. And at, at that, that point, point I most likely will. And I'd also say that there are a number of folks from the public, so will they have an opportunity to speak? Will there be a public comment period at the end of this meeting? There's nothing planned for public comment. I would ask that we do include public comment so the public has an opportunity to address us if, if they wish to. Okay, if there's anything on the agenda to address, then in other words, I mean, an open public, to the an open public I understand, comment. but what I'm saying is we can't have an open session for discussion without motions to, to discuss. Okay. So we have to have something for them to speak on. Just okay. what I'm saying? Understood. Understood. Okay. Mr. Siegel, would you vote, please? Yes. Thank you very much. We're going into executive session, Mrs. Bose. Would I'm you? sorry, I didn't know what you I'm sorry. I lost uh, you. <laughs> all right. So are you voting yes on executive session? Yes. Mr. LaPutte? Yes. Okay, and I will vote yes. I am. Okay. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. We were trying we to just talk about that. Uh, Tammy, I think, is Very clean. Yeah. Okay, the camera is on. We have come out of executive session and um, we are ready to <coughs> entertain any motion, Brian. Yes, um, I would like to make a motion. I guess this will be new business. Um, I have written the motion. I'll pass it down to you guys. One, two, three. There might not be enough of these, Lisa. You can take a copy. Okay, thank you. We could share. Yeah. Wow. I'll read this quickly. Uh, this is a motion for the purposes of um, hiring a firm to conduct, conduct a forensic audit of the district. So I'll just read this. <clears throat> Um, no, it's strike the first sentence. I am hereby making this motion to hire an outside firm to conduct a forensic audit of the Eldred Central School District. The board will work with our chosen auditor to, divine, to define the parameters of this forensic audit. <coughs> At a minimum, the forensic audit should focus on the following areas. First, the handling of reports of bullying and abuse brought to the district by students, parents, and guardians, whether these reports were made under the Dignity for All Students Act or via other means, methods, laws, or policies. The manner in which student discipline issues have been handled. The manner in which special education determinations have been adjudicated and managed. The interpretation and administration of the district's various contracts with its collective bargaining units, including the calculation of pay and determination of benefits. The management of the district's various budget funds, including reserve funds. The district's compliance with laws and regulations that protect students and the public, including but not limited to the Individuals with Disabilities Education Improvement Act of 2004, otherwise known as IDEA, Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act of 1974, the Open Meetings Law, New York State Public Officers Law, Article 7, otherwise known as Open Meetings Law, New York State Real Property Tax Law, and any other laws, regulations, or policies that govern the conduct of the school district and its officials. All communications between school administration and members of the Board of Education to determine whether they satisfy the requirements of open, of open meetings law and consideration of any conflicts of interest, financial or otherwise. I offer that motion. 
Oh, yeah, we got it. I need a second. I'll second. Discussion? I think we're talking a lot of money here, no? Uh, based on my uh, research, this can um, cost a significant amount. It, it all depends on the scope of the uh, what the board would choose to um, advise the audit consultant to do. Uh, there have been cases where it cost up to ten thousand dollars. There are cases where it costs less. But the benefit of doing a forensic audit is to have outside eyeballs on every aspect of the district. I'm and sometimes it. it's done for financial reasons. But I think in this opportunity, we should ask them to dig a little bit deeper into uh, all aspects of the way that the district manages its business. Yeah, I, no, I, I understand that, but. I I'm just saying, but looking at this, this looks like hours and hours and hours. Likely, it's a lot of documents to go through. Um, I think that this is uh, extremely over the top. I think it's way too broad. It's everything we've ever done as a school district ever, uh, and and the 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 implication of that is that we are somehow that we need to be audited. I don't have a problem with an audit of some things for some reasons. I think that as we move forward with our um, actions, that we will be aud doing some of our own auditing as to what happened here in the high school. I think we can handle a lot of this. I cannot, in good conscience, support anything of this scope to our school district, nor the money for it, but yeah. I cannot support anything of this so scope. Let me just clarify that this is not in response to any particular specific item, accusation, media report, or anything like that. This is this is in response to many, many things uh, that have been brought forward to the board collectively or to individual board members that I think should be looked at. Now, I'm okay with opposing a time frame. We go back a certain number of years, or we even go into here and narrow this down a little bit further. But these are the things that I thought it might benefit the district for an outside auditor to take a look at. And I think we'd make a mistake if we just focused on financial aspects and didn't focus on uh, other other things that deal with the way that we treat our, our students and families. And I think there's a benefit to do that. We have our own internal auditors, we have our own internal audit processes, but clearly uh, we would benefit from having an outside expert. And again, I said early on in the motion that the board would define the scope of this, and I think that it would benefit us to have a discussion about it. But these are my initial thoughts on what we should have looked at. Could we just um, start out with finding out when the last state audit was? Because that was, was that long ago. I'm not talking about the comptroller's report or even our own internal state. audit. I'm talking about an, a forensic right, audit. Right. I, I think at this on. point, uh, because of the change we've got going on with the new interim superintendent, this is all looking back. Mm -hmm. And I, un I do understand the passion that's behind this. I do understand the, the desire for um, uh, you know, uh, transparency. I, I cannot, in good faith, support this motion. In I can't fix it, and I can't support it. So I'm, uh, I'm asking that we either vote or table. But I'm not. I'll just make one final plea: is that I don't think that internally we have the uh, capacity to do this. I mean, the reality is that when when you um, are in the middle of things and and you are, see them the way that you've seen them for so long. You, you can't see it differently. You can't see it from an outsider's perspective. There are firms that specialize in specifically this kind of a thing, where they come in and they know precisely what documents to look at. They know precisely yeah. whom to interview, what questions to ask. And they do it all without any bias, inherent or otherwise, and they do a very good job at it. Now, if we want to define the focus, we're concerned about financial aspects of this, I totally get that. But we so, shouldn't be afraid of anything being exposed that we don't need to know in order to provide so better to what end? To what end? We get this report. What, what do you want that we don't have now? Well, I think it would guide decisions that need to be made to um, account for any issues that are, that, that are brought forward. I mean, if there are issues in any of these things, the way that we comply with laws, the way that we, we determine uh, the treatment of, of children in terms of their special ed placements, or the way that we handle bullying reports or harassment reports or whatever, the way we manage our finances, if anything comes to, uh, to the board, well then we're empowered to actually propose policy or to provide guidance to our superintendent. But without knowing it, we are operating blind and we don't know. And then it's all hearsay, right? So if I come and I say, so-and-so told me that this happened, but it happened five years ago, and then this happened. It's all hearsay. Nothing can be done about that. You cannot act upon hearsay. So this all is you know, black and white, unbiased, clear view of what has been happening and what currently happening, happening in the district.
and that's that's just my final pitch. I, I respect your opinion, and uh, but I think this would really benefit our district at this precise time. And I think that there's money in our budget to do this, particularly given some of the other moves that we might have to make. So I am for a forensic audit, but not one that's unlimited time or undefined scope and unknown cost. Yep. So I would be in favor of obtaining a cost on the scope that we define. Is it an RFP process that you would be looking for? I don't yeah. know. I don't know. I don't know. We have to find out. Uh, yes, it would be an RFP. Yeah. Yeah. No. So, th and now we, again, that's another whole thing. I, I, I just feel like it's premature. I feel like we're going into a new point here at Eldred and a new superintendency, and we have this advice and this guidance for right now. And I would defer at this point and say to Dr. Morgano, if as you begin to unfold the layers of this onion that we have here and you find that this would be a good idea then advise us okay. because that way we would have a reason I don't feel now we have a reason enough for this uh, Mr. Brian with all due respect this is like back to Adam and Eve <laughs> well, I didn't put a time frame in those. I, that's the mistake that I made is I didn't define a time frame. Well, and, and that would be a hard thing to do tonight, too. So yeah. um, do you want to table this or do you want to call for the vote? I just, res I, I hear your opinion and I respect it yeah. and I disagree with it. I think that it's, it is not premature. I think it's overdue. And so for that reason, I would like to continue to vote on this. Okay. I'll call the, for the, the vote. last thing I want to say is yeah. that not all of the problems at Eldred are documented. And it would not be discovered by forensic audit. Absolutely agree, but I do believe that there might be more documented than we know about right now. And that's the reason for the forensic audit. Even as a board, there are things that, that I don't know. And it's at this point in my mind, it's hearsay, so how do I act upon that? Yeah. Right? Okay. Okay. All right, Can I'm going to call for the vote. Motion to mm. table it for later. Could we amend the motion to set a time frame? Because I'm, I'm in favor of this. But I'm in the same mindset as Amador on this, that I think that if we should set a time frame, how far back do we want to go? What costs are going to be incurred? There's a few more questions um, that I think need to be answered. Okay. If I know my Robert's rules, that means you have to take back this, and we would have a new uh, motion with time frames. I hear all your feedback. I will amend this to include a time period of seven years backwards from today, and at a cost not to exceed $15,000. And we would submit the RFPs based on that criteria. Now, if we then need to narrow this down based on the RFPs coming back and saying that that's not possible to do that at that cost with that time frame, then we would consider those RFPs. But I would suggest that we make a mo I would make a motion on this to go back for seven years from this point in time, and that we submit an RFP with the expectation we won't. Cons I don't know if we can do this with an RFP. Consider a top range. Maybe we just internally. I'll leave the dollar value out. We would, this will go back seven years. That's that's how I would amend this motion to include review of documents, interviews, or whatever it is for a period of seven years backward from today. Well, we still haven't defined the scope and the price. And there's that statement, at a minimum, the audit should focus. Mm -hmm. Is there anything I that I spelled out that you guys are 100% confident that we don't need to have external review? Because all of these things are items which have been presented to at least me as an individual board member or to this board in public by parents and community members, uh, which I would say that I'm not 100% confident that we have uh, knowledge of all the details to make informed decisions. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say I would say the same, but I would want to know the value of this forensic audit. Yeah, I don't think we know the value until we see what the results of the forensic audit. The that's, the, that's the idea of a forensic audit is that you have somebody come in and tell you what you've missed. And uh, you, by definition, you can't know that going into the audit. Or do you mean the value of what, why do we want money for cost? Well, both. What we would pay and then what, what are the What benefits? would we do with the information for yeah. that matter? I, I'm not saying that there isn't information to be had. Um, I just feel it's premature. We're already in a state of change. I'd like to feel that out. I'd like to see where that goes. I'd like to hear from Dr. Morgano when he knows our district better. And then I would entertain this at a different mm -hmm. time. That's my personal opinion. Yeah. Okay, so I am going to call for the vote. Um, it can be the amended vote, which is with uh, the time frame, the seven years. So, uh, Ms. Wagner? Yes to the amended vote. 
Mr. Siegel. Yes. Yeah. No. 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 Okay. We are then um, done for the evening. Is there an opportunity for an open public comment? There is nothing on the agenda for a public comment at this meeting, no. But we have our open public comment at the end where it's kind of like an open venue for the public to <coughs> share oh, whatever, whatever they'd like to share with us. I, I, I don't know, because it's a special meeting? It's by your rules. Are there a lot of people that want to speak to us? Okay, let's limit our comments to um, <coughs> there is no personnel involved, there are no names of anybody involved, and please make your comment short, okay? And we'll take this for, say, about 10 minutes, okay? All right, public comment. Uh, Tell thank you for the opportunity. Who are you? I'm Audrey Minkowski. Um, my son is a ninth grader here, and I'm a graduate as well. Um, my understanding is that Lawsuit, which uh, was found not in favor of the district. Um, Can you speak up? I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I'll project more. So, my understanding is that uh, the district recently was found negligent in a lawsuit and the plaintiff awarded a million dollars. Um, my understanding is also that on Thursday evening at 11 p.m., the plaintiff will be on the national news discussing the lawsuit. Um, I'd like to ask how many times in the last five years the Alfred School District has made the national news? I don't think anybody knows that answer. We don't? Have we been? I don't know. Maybe we haven't been at all. To that, But to your point then, okay? Yes. Uh, it's twice now. Uh, once for the hazing incident, which okay. was on walker.com, which is national news and was widely discussed, and now for Bullying. So, in the last three years, actually, the Elder District has made national headlines twice. <coughs> Neither were good. And now I'd like to know how many times Ross has been in the national news. Ma'am, I don't know what you're leading up to, but this is not an appropriate forum for what you're trying to. If you want to say something, say it. Um, we have a bullying and hazing problem that's made national headlines. Thank you very much for your information, and I agree. Thank you. Anybody else? Public comment. Yes. Please tell us who you are. Uh, Igor Smetanian, a uh, resident of Glens Bay. Uh, lived here since 1990. Uh, had a daughter that attended uh, the whole school system here. She's here this evening. And her daughter, uh, my daughter's name is Alana. Uh, I just like to make comment the the reason that I came here is because uh, I should have probably came here many years ago to voice uh, myself uh, in front of the board here that there's uh, a leadership authority in the school system here that doesn't seem to be a leader. He needs to set an example and to have concern for the children that that supposedly he's in charge of. My, the incident that I want to bring to light here, uh, because of the recent bullying aspect that sort of woke up my eyes, that maybe there's other things that are smaller in a sense, but they contribute to the big picture. My daughter, uh, well, I, I always drove my daughter, I didn't want her taking the bus, and then her friend, we used to pick her up on the way, so it was always great for me to participate with the kids in the morning because we have such busy lives. I think many parents fail to do that. So that was my, that was my pride and joy, to just take that time out to bring them to school and then to pick them up. Sometimes my schedule was hectic, I have my own business but I always try to be punctual. Well, one morning, and this was in the winter time, I believe it was in February. Sir, was this on the, uh, did, did I read this on the website already? Did, uh, you, did you put this on the website? Because it was about your daughter being yes. out in the cold. Okay, so it's public knowledge. Okay. I appreciate I it, I think it was badly handled. I haven't um, heard the, any of this, and I appreciate it. It's on the website. Comment. No, I don't. I don't think this is appropriate for this commentary. It happened a long time ago. She was 13. I think it's despicable what happened to your daughter. I don't think it needs to be discussed tonight. It's on what website? On the that 
uh, petition. Where can I find it, sir? Yeah, it's I'm interested Facebook. in. It's, it's on, on her personal Facebook page. It's not no, it's on the petition because I read it last no, night. It's not. It's on my personal Facebook page. Okay. Well, how did I read it then? You okay. I, I, I understand what you're defer referring to, and I'm not, I'm not saying that you're wrong. I'm saying that this, isn't a per this is a personal action of someone that can't be named that we do not need to discuss in this public setting. That's this, all. This may be unfair criticism, Carol, because I don't know if you knew what was happening at the last school board meeting, but the criteria that you're using to determine who's allowed to speak and on what topics <laughs> seems to be a little fuzzy because we had members of the public addressing a specific issue that dealt with one of our board members, and that person was allowed to continue. So I think in this particular case, this is obviously right. something that benefits our board to understand what's happening to a student and a family in our school, and I think we should let this continue. We're, we're under no obligation to respond. Uh, to Mr. Smintania, but I think we owe it to him to listen to him. We're an elected board that represents his interests. If it doesn't pertain to tonight, can we meet with not. him after? We would, I would happily meet with you afterwards. After the meeting. This does not pertain to tonight. I think there's a benefit for members of the public being able to share things publicly. I don't like the you know behind closed doors meetings with individual board it's, members. I'm not ever comfortable with that myself. I always encourage people to come speak publicly, and we should encourage that. But if it's not pertaining to tonight, it's I would be happy right. to wait. Would it be after, appropriate after for this. Thursday meetings, regular meeting? Can he speak with on this topic Thursday? Because if the distinction is between a special meeting and a regular yeah. meeting, we should invite him to come Thursday. But if we're just attempting to not hear the story, we, we'll wait after. The meeting and talk to him. But that's talk that's not in full view of the public. That's not the way this but is intended. Is not appropriate. Ms. Bleifernick, you are the school board president. I just disagree with the, the criteria that you're using to determine whether people should speak. I just and want things to be um, spoken about that we have power and ability to do something about, not anecdotes as true and terrible as I think that they were, anecdotes from years ago that will make no difference now. That's all. I think they will make no difference now. We just disagree. And, okay. And, and I, I think that's okay to disagree. Absolutely. Okay. We would be happy to meet with you after the meeting. Sure. I would. I would. Is it okay? I mean, I, I would have preferred that this be on record uh, because I think that things need to go on record and, and not be brushed under the table. Would it be appropriate? That sort of sounds like what, to it's, what it is. And, and it doesn't meeting. matter when it occurred. It, it isn't right yes, to this day. Meeting. We don't have to answer. Would, he be, would it be appropriate to invite him to that so it would be on record? We can thank you for your comments him. at this point. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any further? I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make the motion. Second. Ms. Wagner? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. 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 Okay. Thank you. And I will say yes. Can we? Can we? Meet Thursday. These people?